Bishop Hurd, I'm going to ask that you um, start the Bible study off in prayer. Beloved, this is Cornerstone Deliverance Church. We're located at 321 Post Avenue in Westbury, New York, where we have services on Sunday at 11 a.m. Sunday School and 12.30 p.m. Worship Service. Our website is www cornerstonedeliverancechurch.com, and we invite you to download our church app that is free, no charge to you, amen, from the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. So, Bishop, I'm going to ask that you commit to prayer, the Bible study to God in prayer. Father, we commence this Bible study unto you. On tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, Lord God, we ask right now, Lord God, uh, that you come from on high, Lord God. Touch the speaker of the hour, Lord God, uh, that you fill her uh, with the words, Lord God, that you have for us individually and collectively on tonight, Lord. We ask, Lord God, that we bind any distractions that may come, Lord God. We bind anything that will try to take the seed that will be sowed in our hearts on today, Father God. So we thank My you God, once Hallelujah. In- Lord God, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, Lord God, uh, that we shall and we will and we must be even better than we were when we got on this phone line on today, Lord God, to receive the word that you have for our hearts on today, Lord God. So with that, Lord, we say may you be glorified, uh, may the saints be edified, may sinners be sanctified, and may the devil be horrified. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Amen. Amen, amen, in Jesus' name, amen. So we welcome you tonight to Cornerstone Deliverance Church Bible Study, amen. Just a recap of last week. Last week we touched on, um, praise the Lord, welcome to the Bible study. Last week we touched on, um, hallelujah, love being a love to our neighbor and a help to our neighbor from the parable of the Good Samaritan. And as I looked at that passage again, what I saw from the man that came down from Jerusalem that was beat bad and left for dead, that those that was workers of the temple, which was a Levite and a priest, they was workers of the temple, they passed by and did not help. And that that just touched my heart that God was really speaking to the leader, even though we, we didn't touch on that last week. So those of us that are leaders, temple workers, pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, those of you that are assigned to be a help um, to those that are in Christ, don't walk by. Don't don't walk by when you see things are not right. That was he was bringing correction to a leader to the leaders, and he he raised up a Samaritan man, a man that they did not consider to have God to be a help. We got to be mindful. We really do. We got to get it together. But, beloved, tonight I'm coming to you from the book of Acts, amen, chapter 10, amen. And we want to hear what it is that the Spirit has to say to us. Um, Acts chapter 10 is a long chapter, and we're going to read the the verses first. And um, I'm going to ask first. Bishop, I'm going to ask that you begin to read. I want everyone to pull out their Bibles that you can follow us along in the Word of God. Bishop, I'm going to ask that you read from 1 through 23, and I'm going to ask that Minister Deborah Howell read from 24 to from 24 to 43, and then we're going to take our time and go through these scriptures. So I'm going to give, we're going to give our attention over to Bishop first and then to Minister Howell. Amen. You ready? Yes. Amen. Everybody ready? Yes. Amen. Acts chapter 10. Amen. Acts, Acts chapter 10, starting at verse 1, and it says, There was a certain man in, in Syria called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one who feared God with all his heart, excuse me, with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Verse 3, he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? 
And he said unto him, Your prayers and your alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send me to Joppa, and call for one Simon, whose sure name is Peter. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell you what you ought to do. Verse 7, And when the angel which spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them who waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. And on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew near unto the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Verse 10, and he, began, and he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And so a heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending up unto him, and as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein we all, wherein we all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spoken to him again the second time, What God has cleaned, what God has cleansed, that call not thou common. 16. This was done three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Verse 17. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was sure named Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek you. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing. For I have sent them. Verse 21, Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause of Wherefore you are come. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one who fears God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for you into this house, and to hear words of you. Last verse, verse 23. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Good evening, saints of God. Verse 24. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, and fell down at his feet and worshipped. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that is, is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call anyone, any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for. I ask, therefore, for what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thy alms are 
or had the remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Amen. 35. Amen. But in every nation... He that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. 37. That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And we are all witnesses, and we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Verse 41. Not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto people and to testify that is he which was ordained of God to be judged, to be the judge of quick and dead. Last verse 43. To him give all the prophets witnesses that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission, remission of sin. Amen. And the word of God is blessed. Amen. Beloved, amen. As the woman of God was reading, what stood out to me was that when Jesus resurrected from the grave, that he was not seen by all, but by those that God appointed for him to be seen by. And it's like that today. The reason why it's like that today, because in John 14, Jesus promised the people the Holy Ghost. He says that he was going away and that another comforter would come. And when that comforter came, that the world, that we would know him, those that believe, but the world would not know him, nor would they see him. Amen? Amen. So I just want to get into this text really quick. Amen. We're going to start at the beginning of Acts 10. It says, there was a certain man in case to record Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. So we know that this man called Cornelius was a military man, and I could relate to that, amen, because I'm militant myself, amen, and that he was not just a low-level military man, that he was Italian and that he was over uh, um, a centurion band, that means that he was over at least 100 men. Amen? It says amen. here, it gives a little description about the man. Amen? It says here in verse 2 that he was a devout man, that he feared God, and that he feared God with all of his household. Amen? If we could give God a believing household, if there is a believing household when the gospel is preached, amen, the whole house shall be saved. Amen? But it must be a believing household, beloved. Amen? A devout man who feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. So we see that he was a praying man, that he feared God, that he gave alms to the poor. Amen. It says that he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, that's around 3 o'clock p.m., an angel of God coming to to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. He was called by name. Amen. And I want you to see here the supernatural divine visitations come through prayer. Amen. Cornelius was praying. Amen. And he was praying at the time um, in keeping with the Jewish 
um, three traditional Jewish times of prayer, amen. He was praying at 3 p.m., so that means he knew something about how the Jews worshiped, amen. And I want to speak to you about prayer for a minute, amen. God's agent to Cornelius was an angel who appeared to him in a vision, Amen. And frequently in Luke and Acts, God used prayer time as the opportunity for leading to new avenues of ministry. Beloved, if you want a supernatural divine provision, amen, it's not just enough to be in the word. You have to learn how to talk to God in prayer. The language, language is a gateway. And we know that depending on where you live, what language you speak, what dialect you speak, and then you may not be understood by your neighbor. Amen. Hallelujah. Based on the language that you speak. Those of us, amen, that have come out of the street, and I'm not saying that I have come out of the street, but I said those of us that have come out of the street, amen, you know that those that are in gangs or those that are in the street, they have a different language, amen? And if you don't speak their language, you don't get no access, amen? And you, you know those of you that used to club, they didn't let everybody in. You came in dressed a certain way, and they would turn you around and send you the other way, amen? So language is a gateway. And the language in which we speak to God is prayer, amen? So we have to develop a prayer life. So prayer is a time for opening oneself up to God, amen. This enables his leading. Visions occur frequently and, and acts as a vehicle of divine leading, which illustrates that the major advances in the Christian witness witness are all under divine direction, amen. So we find here that Cornelius um, was praying unto God, amen, at 3 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon, and then there answered him an angel from God, amen, and the angel from God came with direction, amen. When we pray, we have to stay long enough to hear from God. Sometimes we, we go into prayer and we're doing all the talking, but we don't stay still long enough to get a response from God, amen. So sometimes we may pray for a minute, 15 minutes, a half an hour, amen, Sometimes after praying, you just have to be still long enough, amen, to get an answer from God. Because when your your prayer is a is a conversation between you and God, amen. And a conversation is never a one way street. A conversation always takes two parties, amen. That means that you're talking and someone else is talking back to you. Have you ever been in prayer with God or been in prayer to God and he answered you, whether he dropped it in your spirit, whether you heard an audible voice, or whether you just had a visitation and received some direction? Beloved, he's still the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. The way God sent his angel to appear to Cornelius in this day, he can send an angel to, to appear to you in this day. Amen? So yeah. I, I, I want you to be open, amen, to hear from God when you pray to him. Don't just go in in prayer and believe that that's just you talking and you're just bitten and this is what you do. No, have expectations of an answer. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let your faith put a demand, amen, on the presence of God. Stay long enough that he may speak back to you. Amen. So it says here, hallelujah, and when he, Cornelius, looked on him, amen, being the angel that he was afraid and said, what is it? He said, what is it, Lord? Amen. So he, he, he responded to the presence of the angel, amen, with honor. And he said unto him, your prayers and your arms are come up for a memorial before God. So the angel was a ministering angel, a messenger angel, amen, that was sent by God to let Cornelius know that his prayers that he had been praying and his arms that he has been given to the poor in secret, amen, has come up before God as a memorial. That means that God has remembered, amen, the things that he has done. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know how long Cornelius and his family believed and how long he gave arms to the poor, amen, but it does say that he was known well amongst the Jews, amen, somewhere within the reading, amen. It says that he was known well amongst the Jews, amen, and he was liked amongst them, so he was privy to their customs, 
and now send men to Joppa and call for our and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon and Tanner whose house is by the seaside. So the angel let Cornelius know that God heard your prayers. He remembers your arms that you have given to the poor. So now God is showing him some honor, but he's giving him direction. The angel came to give him a word from God, but the angel could not give him the gospel. The angel could not give him the very word that would give Cornelius eternal life. The angel could not bring that message. So what did God have the angel to say? Send for Peter. Peter was the man that believed, amen, that God has called and sent to preach this gospel. So God had him to send for Peter, those of us that have been called to the work of Christ, those of us that believe, and the Great Commission has been given to everyone that believes. If you go to Mark 16, it speaks about how everyone that believes is commissioned to preach this gospel to the uttermost parts of the world. And it promises us promises us that signs and wonders will follow the work that we do. Amen? So that means that people will be healed, that demons can be cast out. Amen? That, that, that the Holy Spirit will back up. The Holy Ghost will back up Amen. We'll back up your preach word. Amen. So the kingdom of God that is upon you, upon uh, that upon the people upon you preaching the word, the kingdom of God is not just talk, but this kingdom comes with power. It comes with transforming power, mind change and power, heart change and power, life change and power, abundant life giving power. Amen. Listen, when Peter preached the gospel to them, Peter told them that Jesus is not just the God of those that are quick, those that are made alive. He also the, the, the God of the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see here that Cornelius obeyed the angel, and immediately he called two of his men, two of his servants, and he sent them to Peter. Amen. But now Peter is a man that was converted amen, that had to believe on Jesus Christ out of Judaism, amen. And so when they followed the Lord, they was under the Mosaic law at one time. At that time, they were taught not to eat anything unclean, amen. So that means that they had a special diet in which they were to eat. I want to speak to you about that just for one minute. I want to go to these scriptures really quick. Leviticus 20 24 through 26, I want to bring a little history concerning the law of Moses, amen, and the Jews. It says, but I have said unto you, ye shall inherit, this is God speaking to them, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. You shall therefore put differences between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean fowl and clean, and ye shall not make your souls abominable by beasts or by fowl or by any manner of living things that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean, and you shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy and have served you and have severed you from other people that ye shall be mine. Amen. So you see here that God has separated his people. He has given them a special diet. Amen. That they was not going to eat like the people in the land. He was teaching them what was clean and what was unclean. And he has severed them from the other people in the land. Amen. I want us to look at Deuteronomy 14, 6 through 8 as well. It says, you may eat any animal that has hooves, divide it in two, and that they choose the, and that choose the cut. But of those that chew the cut or have divided hooves, you are not to eat the, the, the camel, the rabbit, or the rock badger, although they chew the cud, they do not have hooves. They are unclean for you, as well as the pigs, though it's Hooves are divided. It does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. You must not eat its meat or touch its carcass. Amen. So that right there, when they was under up under the Mosaic law, Amen, which Jesus Christ came to fulfill, Amen, in his 
in his ministry within the earth. He came to fulfill the fullness of the law, amen, to obtain the righteousness from the law because man was not able to do so. As soon as you disobeyed one part of the law, you disobeyed all the law, amen. And so when Peter received this vision, amen, hallelujah, Jesus, the, their own life under the law, Hallelujah. You see that Peter was still, I don't want to say that he was living by its order, but he was still not eating anything unclean. So we have to learn, those of us that come into Christ, that we cannot bring our culture or those things that have been handed down from our families, amen, into into our our life with Christ, amen. We have to learn to know the difference between our culture and those things that have been handed down through our families and those things that God has said, amen. Now, the them not eating anything unclean was an order given to them by God, but that's when they was under the law. Now, in Christ, we are no longer under the law, but we are saved by grace. Amen. Faith in Christ by grace. Amen. And so now that we're under grace, whatever it is that we bless, we can eat. Whatever it is that we bless, we can eat. I also want to share another scripture with you. Amen. Someone pull up Mark seven fourteen um, through 23, because Jesus explains here what makes a man unclean. Amen. Jesus explains this. What makes a man unclean? Anyone have Mark? 7, 14 through 23. Amen. And when he had to say, woman of God. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man has... Go ahead, continue. If any man have ears to to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, the disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entering into the man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly and goes out into the drought, purging all meat. And he said that which cometh out of the man that defileth the man. For within, for from within, out of the heart of men proceedeth evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. So, people of God, what I want to share with you tonight is that the defilement was not coming from what they took into their mouth to eat, even though up under the Mosaic law, because Jesus had not come and died yet, they were taught not to eat. But Jesus had come to set a higher standard of order, and he's letting them know that what you put in your mouth to eat don't defile you. For so that's going to go in your mouth. You're going to chew it up. You're going to swallow it. It's going to go in your stomach. The digestive juices is going to devour it, and it's going to come out of your rectum as waste. This is what he's saying. So that doesn't stay. Amen. So that does not defile you. But he says what comes out of a man's mouth or what comes out of a woman's mouth is in her heart. Amen. The heart is not that muscle that pumps blood. But that is, is the heart, but that right there is a muscle, amen? And, but the heart of man that we speak of is the very spirit of man, the Christ that God blew into man, that gave man life. That's his heart, his spirit, amen? So the word of God is telling us, and what Jesus revealed to his disciples, because they did not have an understanding when he first spoke the parable. And it's just like some of us today. The word will go forth, the Bible study will go forth, but you may not you may not get a full understanding. It's all right to write down what you did not understand, call up your shepherd later, or email your shepherd, whatever you have to do. I would like to speak to you because I still don't have an understanding. Amen? The same Amen. way the disciples did to Jesus. 
right? Because he he was they was his disciples. He was able to give them deeper revelation. So he made it simple for them. Amen. And so what he said to them is that what comes out of a person's mouth comes out of their heart. It speaks the issues of the heart. So a person that is speaking evilness and wickedness, that is what defiled them. Amen. But if if out of your mouth you're speaking the things of God, the word of God, love, peace, gentleness, goodness, amen, there is no defilement in that, amen? So a man defiles himself based on what is in his heart. Your heart is a bag of words. When God circumcised the heart upon man believing, he put his word in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. But now you have to learn the new language, the kingdom language, because you used to speaking and walking and talking and behaving a certain way prior to coming to know Christ. Amen. He Amen. wants you to speak without defilement. Amen. He wants you to live a life of behavior without the defilement that the minister read that proceeds out of the evil heart. So at times I look to hear. Amen. Whether a person is defiled or not, based on what comes out of their mouth. Amen. I don't know who you are and who you represent, or even if you are who you say you are, until I hear what comes out of your mouth and I see your actions. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes we testify against ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. This Jesus even spoke at one time, and he says, if a man looks upon a woman that is not his wife and looks after her, amen, he didn't have to touch her, but in his heart he has already sinned. Sin begins in the heart. The evil working of sin is a heart condition. This is why Jesus had to die, amen, that we can have a new heart. Amen. So the work Amen. of Christ that was done, the spirit of man is changed instantly, but the mind must be transformed because the mind brings about the behaviors of a man. Amen. So the, the mind must be renewed and spiritualized that we do not continue to live life in that same manner. Amen. 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 So is there any questions concerning anything that has been spoken so far? Amen, because a lot has been spoken. So you find here that there was a sheep. Now, we saw that Cornelius prayed, and God answered Cornelius with an angel. Amen. Now, Peter, who is hungry, is on the rooftop, and he's praying. But Peter has an open vision. Amen. Peter has an open vision. And the open vision that Peter has is that there's a sheep that drops from the heavens that is held by the four corners, and there's all kinds of animals and creeping and crawling and hook things there. And remember, Peter was taught according to the Mosaic law that they was not supposed to eat anything unclean. So God is now teaching Peter a lesson, and he tells Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, I have never eaten anything unclean. Now, this thing is detestable to Peter. You know, some of you, you have grown up throughout your life. Some of you, you may not have eaten pork. Some of you don't eat the scavengers of the sea. Those are the bottom feeders, the shrimp and the lobster and stuff like that. They eat the stuff from the bottom. Amen. And so now someone is telling you to kill and eat. Kill and eat these things that you have not eaten all your life. And these things are detestable unto Peter. And Peter said, no, I have not eaten anything unclean. So that voice came again and again and again unto Peter, and then the vision went away. Now Peter is trying to get a revelation based on the open vision that he had. And even though he had an open vision, he still don't understand what the open vision means. And some of us are having dreams. We have an open vision. And you need an understanding. You need a revelation. And it's good to pray to God to get a revelation and, and to allow the Holy Spirit to interpret what just took place. Amen? But in the midst of, 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 of Peter thinking of what just happened, in this open vision, and what was that voice that told me to kill and to eat? My God, did the Holy Spirit speak to Peter and say, there are men at the door that come for you. You go with them. This is the Holy Ghost speaking to Peter, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen? The Word of God says in John 3 that a man must be born again. Amen? He must be born of the water and of the Spirit. 
Amen. So there's many today that believe that have not been born again yet. But you cannot begin to understand spiritual things until you have first been born. So we're teaching people that have not even been born of the Spirit, that don't have the help of the Spirit, and this is a problem. Amen? Because not only did God deal with, deal with Cornelius, he also, the Holy Spirit, dealt with Peter. Amen? So God draws the people with love and kindness, and he sends the preacher to the people. Did we get that? Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus. Amen. All of this is a divine move. It's a divine act. Amen. God is dealing with Peter, who's the preacher, but he's also dealing with Cornelius. Amen. Even though he's about it, he, he prays, he's still a sinner. He has not heard the gospel yet. He has not yet believed. Amen. And everyone must come by way of the cross. But Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. So we all have to hear that gospel, and we all have to believe. But once we truly believe, the regenerated man, the Holy Spirit, judges your heart, and he comes on in and takes up residence with you. This is the importance of the Holy Ghost. This is the importance of the Holy Ghost and fire baptism. Amen. Because he baptizes us into the body of Christ. Amen. Until you are baptized by the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's the one that places you in the body. Did we get that? So you'll find that at Cornerstone Deliverance Church, we press. Once you say you believe, we want to know, have you been filled yet? Have you been baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire? Have you been baptized with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Amen. That's not a water baptism. That is a spiritual baptism. Someone pull up um, John 3. We want to hear how how Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be born again. Someone pull up John 3 for me. I want you all to see that really quick. And we're going to get through this. This is not going to be a long teach. The reason why some with the Holy Ghost don't have the understanding is because once you are born of the Spirit, you are babe. Amen? Anything that is born is a babe. Anything that is born is a babe. The day that you become born, you are babe. When a woman have a baby, amen, the child is born, the child is a babe. Can't hold up his head, can't turn over. Amen. Have to learn how to hold up the head, how to learn how to turn over. They crawl before they walk. Amen. So once you are born, we understand that you are spiritual immature and you need to grow. Amen. But if you had not been born, you can't grow. You cannot expect for people that believe and have not been born to grow. Amen. 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 So now we in John chapter 3. Amen. And in John chapter 3, Nicodemus asked Jesus a question. Let's start at verse 1. Someone read it. Let's start at verse 1 really quick. What does John 3 say? I, got, I can't find out what he's named, but it said there was a man of the, what's that, Pharisee? Pharisee. Pharisee's name. Nicodemus. Got, Nicodemus, a ruler uh, of Jews. Yeah, I'm going to help you. Uh-huh. The same, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doesn't, except God be with him. Jesus answered. Uh-huh, continue to read. Mm-hmm. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Wasn't it? I mean, it yeah, continue to read. Continue to read. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and, and be born? Jesus answered, very, very, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Did you hear that? Mm-hmm. Even once we believe, even once we believe, the next step to believe in is being baptized and being baptized. born of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Amen. You, that's that water baptism in Jesus' name, but you have to be born of the Spirit. Amen. You I must be born, born again. Spirit. Jesus spoke. That's right. That's right. That's right. You must be born again. Amen. And so you will find that that teaching of being born again, amen, is not taught as much 
when you come to see us, you see the first thing we if you're saved and you and you know about your salvation, but if you have not been born again, that's the next step. Because being born again brings about your you being born of the spirit, amen, places you into the body of Christ as a babe, amen, and then you can begin to mature. But if you have not been born of the spirit, how can you grow? That means that you're still in the womb, amen? A baby cannot begin to grow in this life until the mother pushes her out of the womb, amen? Amen. So, amen. beloved, it is very important to be born again. And so Nicodemus did not have an understanding. He said, should a man enter back into his mother, amen, and be born a second time? But he's a teacher of the Lord. And Jesus is telling him that how do you not understand these spiritual things? Aren't you a teacher of the law? I tell you about natural things, and if I tell you about spiritual things, you still will not understand. So Jesus answered and said unto him, this is verse 10, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee. And we have some today that are leaders that don't understand spiritual things. Some that are leaders that have not been born of the spirit. Amen? But they lead it. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. If you ain't got no Holy Ghost, you ain't got no business leading nothing. We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. Amen? If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? Amen? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? So, beloved, this is the key. We must receive that Holy Ghost and fire baptism. Amen? Hallelujah. And and so here we have, um, we're back in Acts 10. Amen? And we're in that portion pertaining to um, the sheep coming down, all the unclean being there, and Peter being told to kill and eat, and Peter said that he has never eaten nothing unclean, amen? And so then the Holy Spirit speaks to Peter and says that there are men coming for you, amen, that you go with these men. Everything that we do, we ought to do by the leading of the Holy Spirit. The same way the Holy Spirit spoke to Peter, if we submit and surrender to the Spirit and develop ourselves in the Word of God and in prayer, the Holy Spirit will speak to us too. Amen? Amen. It says here in verse 17, Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. The men were already there. And called and asked whether Simon, which whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. While Peter mm-hmm. thought on the vision, Peter still caught up on, on the spirit. Amen. The spirit, the Holy Ghost, said unto him, Behold, three men seek you. Arise therefore, get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Amen. Beloved, this is why we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost for direction. We need the Holy Ghost for teaching. We need the Holy Ghost to show us the difference between good and evil. Amen? Amen. 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 So now we're going to move forward. We're going to move forward to the portion of the word where Peter is the moral. Amen. That's verse 24. After they entered into Caesarea, they're on their way to Caesarea, Peter did not go alone. He took six men with him from Joppa. How we know that it was six men with him? Because it is mentioned later on in the text that Peter was with six men, okay? Mm-hmm. And plus the three that came with him, that came to get him from Cornelius' house. So 24 says, and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, listen, 
The word of God is about to come forth. Cornelius had a visitation. Cornelius ain't about to receive the gift of God alone. Cornelius called his friends. He called his family. Uh Listen, the angel spoke to me from God. Amen. The angel said that God has heard my prayers and he has seen my arms. Amen. And he told me to send for this man. And and this man is going to speak something from God to us. Amen. And so this is how we ought to be. We need to call our family, our sisters, and our brothers when there is a move of God because we don't want them to miss it. Do you remember how it was when you first got saved and people thought that you was losing your mind, that you was Mm -hmm. telling it everywhere you went, amen, about what God has done for you? You remember that zeal that you had, amen? May God stir you up and give you back your zeal. In the name of Jesus, by the blood, when you was preaching everywhere, amen, telling everybody about Jesus. People ain't even asking you about Jesus, but you telling them about Jesus. That's the type of zeal we need, amen? And it says in 25, and as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, stand up. I myself am Mm -hmm. only a man. Did you get that? Those of Mm -hmm. us that's bringing the good news, amen, we are blessed, but we are not God. We are not to be worshipped. Amen, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. For those Mm -hmm. of us that come, we come to serve the people of God, that you may mature. We come to serve you, that you may be learned. We come to serve you, that you may grow. We come to serve you, amen. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many who were come together. Amen. I love this. And he said unto them, you know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man who is Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Amen. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So when God has showed Peter in the vision concerning the animals to kill and eat, what God Mm -hmm. was saying to him, those that I make clean, Peter, even if you were told to be separated from them, if I clean them, you don't call them common and unclean. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. So the preacher is not choosing who can be saved. The preacher is looking to who God is saved. Amen? Mm -hmm. We are coming into agreement with what God is doing. God is in control of this saving thing. He, He says who goes to hell and who don't. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. So we have to make sure that we are led by the Spirit, that we hear the Spirit. I remember there was a time I was, I woke up out of my sleep, and the Holy Spirit said to me, pray for my people. So I said to God, I said, well, God, who is your people? And, you know, who do you want me to pray for? And throughout that day, I wound up having conversations with people, and um, when I prayed for them, they were growing up in the Spirit, and I said, Lord, no way is that your people. That can't be your people. And God said, yes, that's my people. And what I realized, the people that I thought was God people, that I didn't think was God people, was his people. But the Holy Spirit had to reveal to me that they was his people and that they needed to be strengthened. Amen? So this thing is by the leading of the Holy Spirit. We need some spiritual insight. And you cannot have that without the Holy Ghost. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent you have sent for me. So Peter is not assuming why Cornelius sent for him. He wants to hear why Cornelius sent for him. So Cornelius begins to tell Peter about what took place. He says, and Cornelius said, Four days ago, I was fasting. So Cornelius was not just praying. He was fasting. And sometimes when people come in and we're going to tarry with them in prayer for the Holy Ghost, what do we tell them? Fast for three days. Fast or fast that day. Amen. And come in. Amen. Fast and pray and come in. Empty yourself out. Give yourself over to spiritual things. Amen. So this day, Cornelius said that he was fasting. Amen. Unto this hour and at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. So when you're, when you're fasting, fasting should be coupled with prayer, and not just one prayer, but you should be praying um, throughout the day. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. So this man in bright clothing was the angel, the messenger angel, that gave Cornelius the instruction. Amen. And said, Cornelius, your prayer is heard and your arms are and your arms are had in remembrance in the sight 
Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. So he's telling him why he sent for him, amen, that he sent for him because the angel of God came to him and told him to send for him. All of this is divine, amen. When you call for the preacher, the preacher is not coming, amen, to to um, speak what you want to hear. The preacher is coming to speak what God says the Lord. And sometimes we don't like what the preacher is coming to say, amen, but we must learn that if it be the word of God, search the scriptures. If it be the word of God, even if you don't like it, you can answer God. You can get in dialogue with God. So is it with the preach word across the pulpit. It is the word of God. Amen. If, if, and, and you ought to be able to answer God or to receive his provision through the preached word that comes because the word belongs to him. The word does not belong to the speaker. Amen. So we have to learn how to answer God and not the man. Amen. Hallelujah. When we begin to pray, when the word move us, we're not answering the preacher. We're answering God. We're praising God for the provision of his word and a manifestation in the, in the power and the substance that the word itself bring. Amen? Amen. Amen? So now let's see. Let's see how the house of Cornelius hears to preach gospel and how their faith pulls the provision out of it. Amen? And because they believe, and let's see how the Holy Spirit responds to the believing heart, not man. Peter didn't respond. Peter's watching. Peter's watching. Peter preached, and he, and he saw Amen? This is what took place with Peter. God is at work. Man ain't at work. God is at work. So the word that Peter preached was God, amen, and when they believed God's word, something took place, amen, and it wasn't quiet, amen? It was not a quiet thing that took place, and I want us to be able to touch on what it was, amen? It says here in 33, Immediately, therefore, I sent to you, and you have well done that you are come. Because that means him coming means that he obeys God. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God? They wasn't just present before Peter. This was a God move. God sent his angel to speak to Cornelius. So the angel said, God said, send for Peter. Peter came. So they was all there before God. When you come to the church house, you're there before God. When you ask for a preacher, you're there before God. If you're hearing the preach in the, in, in, the, in the street, the kingdom of God has come upon you, you are there before God. Amen. We have to learn how to honor and reverence God properly in his word, to hear mm-hmm. all things that are commanded you of God. Amen. So they didn't want to just hear from Peter, but they want to hear what God commanded Peter to tell them. And God did not just command this of Peter. He commanded this of everyone that believes. The great commission is given to every believer, not just the pastor, the prophet, the teacher, the apostle, the evangelist. But if you are a believer, you ought to know how to preach this gospel. You ought to know how to share the gospel with your family and your neighbors and the strangers that you come by that they may come to know that there is salvation for them. Because this thing is for whosoever that will believe. We found out today that God is no, no, no respect of person. Amen? Whether you be um, white, whether you be black, whether you be Indian, whether you be Asian, whether you be Italian. Amen? Because he was of the Italian band of the military. Did he not say that? Mm-hmm. Amen. Salvation is for everyone. God is no respecter of person. So we got to be willing to give it to everyone. Don't pass nobody by. Amen. Yes, salvation is for them. Amen. What I realize is that when people come to see me or engage in a conversation with me, out of nowhere, I'm waiting for opportunity. Opportunity just to give them Christ. Because I know that you don't just want to speak to me because I'm on assignment by God. Amen? So it says here, then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter person. There it is. But in every nation, he who fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto you, children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. So it's a preach word and it's a testimony of Jesus. It's not a testimony of self. Uh, It may be a testimony on how Christ saved me. Amen. But it's not going to be about me. Amen. Um, or geared toward me. 
The preacher is there to point the people in the direction of Christ. He is Lord of all. That word I say, you know, which which was published throughout all of Judea. So he's constantly saying, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. Amen? You know. Mm -hmm. And he says how Mm -hmm. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of devils. Amen? And that God was with him. Beloved, I wanted to stop right there. Now, if Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit, before going forth with ministry, should not we be anointed with the Holy Spirit? Amen. Amen. The student is not greater than the master. Luke three twenty two. Someone pull it up and read it. When Jesus was baptized with water, the Holy Spirit came down upon him and um and 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 and, and, and stayed upon him, remained on him. Amen. Mm-hmm. Luke three. And you want to have Luke three twenty two? Yes. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, and thee I am well pleased. Thou art my beloved son, and thee I am well pleased. So this, at his baptism, did the Holy Spirit come down upon him and remain on him. Someone pull up Luke four seventeen through 20. Because Jesus says, that he has the Holy Spirit, and he says that it is the Holy Spirit that anointed him to do the things that he did. Jesus said this, and this was first prophesied by the prophet Isaiah, but Jesus says that this is being fulfilled before your very eyes. Amen? This is what he told them in their synagogue, and they didn't like it. Luke 17 through 20, what does that say? And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has Who's upon him? Me. Who's upon him? The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. That's the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Lord. Go ahead. Is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Amen. Jesus Amen. said that the Holy Spirit was upon him and that it's the Holy Ghost that anointed him to preach. Amen. Listen, Amen. Is the, the, the gospel is a preach word. Healing is a preach word. Deliverance is a preach word. The demons is not afraid of you. They're afraid of the spirit in you and the word that you preach. Amen. Beloved, mm-hmm. sickness is not answering you. It's answering the spirit in you and the word of God that you speak. Amen? Salvation comes as you preach in Jesus and his finished work at the cross, that death, burial, and resurrection. And when man believe on that, they're saved. Did we get that? Amen. So if Jesus was anointed by the Holy Ghost, you don't think that we need to be anointed by the Holy Ghost? The anointing Amen. comes by way of the Spirit. Amen. The anointing is not coming any other way. And you will see anyone that has, that has come through CSCC and have not the Spirit, what we press the bus, oh, you need the Holy Ghost. Those are the questions that I ask. Do you believe? Do you have the Holy Ghost? And if they say, yeah, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and then they, there it is, there it is. We, we want to see that evidence. We want to see the power of God manifested through you. Amen. So the word of God is telling us here that as Peter preached Jesus to them, and you can sit here and go through and see how Jesus preached, see how Peter preached Jesus, amen, how he preached his his, um, death, burial, and his resurrection, how he went about healing and um, healing people and and forgiving sins and and, um, delivering the oppressed people from the devil. He went about doing all of this. All of this was done by way of the Holy Ghost working through him. Amen? And then it said how he um, 
how he died and was resurrected on the third day. The resurrection is an important, important part of our salvation because Jesus lived, we live anew in him. He's the first from the grave to immortality. This is how we know that we will live life immortal, amen? He's the first and we shall follow, amen? And it says here in verse 42, and he commanded us to preach unto the people. This is the commandment, and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. So he, everybody's getting judged, those that are alive and those that heard the gospel and did not believe him. Amen? To him, give all the prophets witnesses that through his name, Whosoever believe in him shall receive remissions of sins. Amen. So remission of sins only comes through Christ. The Muslim is going to tell you something else. They're going to tell you that there's a new Muslim movement, that we're a Christian Muslim. That's a lie from the pit of hell because they don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. They do not believe that he died, that he was buried, that he resurrected on the third day. They're trying to preach to you another Jesus, and you will receive a spirit of error. You won't have no salvation. Beloved, we have to be mindful. Amen. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said he's the way. Amen. None of the others came and said that they was the way. They said that I can show you the way. But we don't need for anyone to show us the way when Jesus says that I am the way. Amen. 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 So now we in Acts 10, verse 44. It says, while Peter yet spoke these words, this happened while Peter was preaching, and I said to God, pour out your spirit like this while I'm preaching, O God, in the name of Jesus by the blood, on every believing heart. It says, while Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were as astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. For they heard them speak with what, 46 says? They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid or hinder what that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Spirit as well as we? As Peter was yet speaking, amen, the gospel, preaching the gospel, amen, they went up and they began to praise God as the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they spoke with other tongues. How do we know that they believed? It was audible. It was visible. It was objective, a demonstration of the Spirit's coming upon them. This is not a quiet event. This is not a quiet event. Amen. People getting saved. This is, there ain't nothing quiet about the Holy Ghost falling. It wasn't quiet in Acts 2 in the upper room. It wasn't quiet then. Peter was amazed that the Holy Spirit had fallen upon the Gentiles as it did for them in the book of Acts. This was called the Gentile Pentecost. Amen. For Peter in them, there's only one Pentecost and there's only one 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 church, but they call this the Gentile Pentecost because now even those that they consider to be common and unclean that God have fellowship with by way of his spirit. Fellowship with the spirit is the best fellowship that you can get. Amen? The pattern of a group demonstration of the Holy Spirit invariably accompanies a new breakthrough in the mission and act. We see it in the initial power of Pentecost in Acts 2. When you read Acts 2, you're going to see that as they was within one place, with one accord with the Spirit, it took them 10 days for the Holy Spirit to come in like a rushing mighty wind, tongues of clothes of fire set upon each of them, and, they, and, it, and it moved them and made them speak. So it's the Holy Spirit that quickens your spirit to make your spirit speak, amen? So y'all can read Acts 2 in your own private time. Those of you that has been filled, you should have been filled this way. As a matter of fact, when we're tarrying with you in prayer, tarry means to wait, and you're praying, calling on Jesus, or saying hallelujah, amen. I'm listening for the tongue to come, amen? Amen. The establishment of the Samaritan mission, someone pull up um, Acts 8, 17 through 18. Listen. Philip preached to the whole Samaria. He preached to the witch Simon got saved. Amen? There was a witch in Samaria named Simon. He preached to the witch Simon got saved. 
And then the apostles came in and laid hands, and these people received the Holy Ghost. What does Acts 8, 17 through 18 say? Acts 17, Acts 18 and 17, Acts 8 and 17. No, you said Acts 8, 8 17 through 18. Okay. Then laid their hands Acts, on them. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Amen. Then laid their hands yes. on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on the hands of the apostles, hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money. You cannot pay for this gift. See, when you go to soothsayers, card readers, tarot card readers, when you go to people that are operating in the divination spirit, amen, you pay them to hear your fortune told, amen. Prophets don't operate like that. We bless prophets, but you can't pay for a word, amen. And so the giving of the Holy Spirit is a free gift. Once you believe in the death and burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, your salvation is a free gift. Once you believe the Holy Spirit searches your heart, if your heart is truly regenerated, he comes in. He quickens you. When he quickens your spirit, it causes for your spirit to speak. It utters. Amen. It utters a language that you did not study and that you did not know. Did we get that? Amen. That's how we know that the Holy Spirit is there. So we're looking for the evidence of it. This is no more people running around talking about I'm saved. And even some that are speaking in tongues need to spiritually mature, needs maturation so they can stop living life like they did. Amen? Okay. Amen. The reaching of former. Amen. Listen, it's tight, but it's right. The reaching of the former disciples of John the Baptist, um, Acts 19.6, what does that say? John the Baptist had disciples. Apostle Paul came upon them. He said to them, have you received since you believe? We do this at CSDC. You say, you say, we want to know, have you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost since you believe? Some people come and say, they ain't got no Holy Ghost, but we don't want you to leave out without your power. Enemy going to beat you up. You had not even been born yet. Amen? Amen. What does that say? Acts 19.6. What does that say? And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. They spoke with what? Tongues. They spoke with what? And prophesied. Amen? Beloved, Amen. you need it with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen? We, 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 we want you to have it the way the Word of God says that you should have it. Without the Holy Ghost, you live in beneath your kingdom privilege because he is your power. You cannot preach without this power. You can't cast out a devil without this power. You can't mature without this power. Amen? You can't heal without this power. You need this power. Amen? Amen. Amen. Always the demonstration of the Spirit serves a single purpose, to show that the advance and witness comes directly from God. It don't come from man. The demonstration of the Spirit shows his power because he said, God is here. God saved you. Amen? It's totally due to divine leading. This is not the power of man. This is the power of God. And if we don't begin to reverence it as the power of God, that it is the power of God, God backs up his word with the demonstration of the power of his spirit. Signs will follow. Amen? Only an undeniable demonstration of divine power can overrule all objections. We talking about any hindrances. You know, I could see Peter thinking, man, these people are Gentiles. But God answered the preached word He filled, in, in their believing hearts. He filled them with the Holy Ghost. And Peter says, who can hinder? Who can stop this? God gave them the spirit like he gave it to us. Who can say these people are not clean? Amen? Amen. And God provided precisely that in Cornelius' house. Surely the spirit had already moved among the Gentiles gathered there in a more inward experience of repentance and faith. The work starts on the inside. Your heart must be believing. Amen. If you, if your heart is not believing, the Holy Spirit ain't coming in there. We don't tell the people to go away. We tell them to keep coming. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word. The more words you hear, the more faith you have. Amen. Hallelujah. So keep coming. Don't go away. Amen. It took those in the book of Acts 
in chapter 2, 10 days to get them. They stay 10 days praying. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. So if you don't get it right away, don't be deterred. Keep coming. Keep coming. The more words you hear, the more faith you're going to get. Amen? And the more you believe. The word of God is a hammer and it hits at the stony heart, beloved. Don't leave the Bible study. Keep coming. Invite others to come. Amen? Amen. And those of you that don't have the Holy Ghost of fire, we invite you out to worship service on Sunday where we will tarry with you until you are filled. Amen? Amen. As Peter spoke, the Holy Spirit is given to all that believe was the Holy Spirit poured out upon the, on these Gentiles. This is how we want it. We want to preach the gospel with the demonstration of the power of God. People answer to preach gospel, answer the word of God when it comes forth. Another obstacle had been overcome in the ever widening scope of Christian mission. Amen. The barrier of national and racial particleism and separatism. Amen. Listen, none of that in Christ. There's only Christ. The barrier of prejudice that looks down on others is unclean. Amen? Hallelujah. They may not live like you live or dress like you dress, but if God is in them, amen, they good. Hallelujah. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, amen. my God. Hallelujah. Listen, the slave, when the slave gave his life to Christ once in this, Apostle Paul sent a letter back to his master and said, now you can't just see him as your slave because now he's your brother because he's also my son. Amen? God brought about equality with this thing. Amen? All we got to do is live it the way he said that we should. Beloved, do not live beneath your kingdom privilege. The word of God tells us that those that believe and is baptized shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We saw here that the Holy Ghost fell before they could be baptized. What a wondrous gift. What a wonder! Jesus is a gift that just keep on giving. My God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is why we press for the Holy Ghost. You shouldn't be preaching, teaching, doing nothing without that spirit. Amen. And there was one that y'all could read up on in the Word of God named Stephen, and he was preaching, and he was preaching good. Amen. He didn't have no spirit. There was two that had a house church in the word of God. What was their name, Bishop? The house church people? Elder Barnes, you know their name? Anybody know who the house church people was? As a matter of fact, it was Apollo. His name wasn't Stephen. His name was Apollo. Who taught him? Who pulled them into their house and taught them? Aquila and Priscilla. Aquila and Priscilla, he had to get filled with the Holy Ghost, and they taught him it, They taught him the right way, and he was preaching up a storm. Amen? But they pulled him in. So when you see people that don't have it the right way, you know, you don't badger them. No. You appeal to them and teach them the right way. Amen? And that's what we do. Make sure they get the Holy Ghost. Then now they have something leading them. Because you don't want to be the blind leading the blind into the ditch. Listen, if the Holy Spirit ain't leading your leadership, it's the blind leading the blind. Why? Because man that walks in darkness, and oh, that's Sunday's word. I'm not going to give you that. Amen. If there's no light in you, you will stumble. If there's no light in you, you will stumble. Amen. Yes, so, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this word that you have brought forth on tonight. Lord, we pray that you allow this word, amen, to illuminate the eyes of the understanding of the hearers, O oh God, that they will continue to read your word and rejoice over it, and that your word will answer them with a provision by way of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. If there's one on the line today that does not know Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, the same way that Peter preached it to Cornelius' house, this is what we give to you today. Amen. That Jesus Christ that went about doing good, healing the sick, as he was anointed by way of the Spirit, it was him that was crucified. It was him that was buried. Amen. It was him that died for your sins. And it was him that was resurrected. And because he lived, you too can live a life, life anew in him. Amen. 
He is your sin offering. Hallelujah. If there's one on the line tonight that does not know him as your personal Lord and Savior, we extend him to you that you may accept him and that your sins may be forgiven. Is there one? 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 Hallelujah. Is there one? For those of you that will be listening to the Bible study, amen, via MP3, if you have a believing heart through this preached word, amen, we would like to walk you through. I pray that the Holy Spirit has fell down upon you and you have already begun to speak, amen, but we want to walk you through confessing, amen, say, Lord Jesus, here I am, a sinner in my sins, come into my heart, I believe you died for my sins. I believe that you are Lord, and I believe that you resurrected. And I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Baptize me with your Holy Ghost and fire in Jesus' name. For everyone that will believe, I want you to know that you no longer sin a man, woman, boy, or girl, but you are the righteousness of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, do we commit them unto you for your safekeeping. Lord, we ask my God. Satan and Lord rebuke you, the hand of God binds you. The blood of Jesus is working against you. We command you to loose your hold or for the people of God even right now by the anointing and the power and the unctioning of my voice. I command you to let them go now in Jesus' name. I can feel the power of God. Lord, I thank you for working on their behalf. Even now in the name of Jesus, the power that is coupled with the breathe with the God breath word. Lord, I thank you for doing it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you finish the good work that you started in them. In Jesus' name, we are Cornerstone Deliverance Church, located at 321 Post Avenue in Westbury. Our number is 800-373-6948. You can either join us in worship or join a worship that is um, of Jesus Christ, amen, that is in your area near you, amen, because you need to be developed. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, and you need to be instructed in righteousness. Amen. Amen, and welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah. Let us Amen. rejoice. Hallelujah. 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 Thank, you, thank, you. thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Beloved, on tonight, I want you to be able to share what it is that you receive from the lesson that is taught. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to see Minister Patricia Potts on Woman of God, um, would you like to share tonight? God bless you, um, Apostle, and everyone on the line. God bless you. you. I, I, I got off from work late, so I was on the end, but I was blessed by the teaching, amen, that we do need the power, the Spirit of the Lord, which is the Holy Ghost. That's the power. And once we receive the Holy Ghost, we will receive uh, power. Hallelujah. And we need, and we need power. But I was... Um, I was blessed by the fact that there was preparation before the power was received. Um, amen. Amen. Um, you know, God knows um, our desires, hallelujah, and what we desire. If we desire the, uh, to receive the Holy Spirit, there, there, there's preparation and um, and I was listening, and I never really looked at it like this, and I thank God for the anointing on this teaching. Amen. Um, Amen. Cornelius didn't have the Holy Ghost, but he had a vision. Amen. The angel came and visit, visited um, Cornelius. So... He didn't have, he, they, they didn't receive the Holy Ghost, but he received a vision. And that means that God can come to anyone, hallelujah, and prepare, prepare one to receive. That's true. All right. So that, to me, that was, that was very powerful because we're talking about the Holy Ghost, but they didn't have the Holy but he was devote, devoted. He feared the Lord. Hallelujah. He was seeking and um, the the angel came, and there was a visitation. Hallelujah! And he 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 followed through on the visitation. What he received, so Amen. he followed through. 
and Peter had that, and Peter had a vision too, and they followed through. So there was, you know, kind of a a, 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 a visitation, um, a prophetic word, mm-hmm. and they acted on it. And he acted on it. Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. So though, you know, those are some points that we could say that you know, like uh, you know, God knows what we desire, and He'll He'll make a way. Hallelujah for the anointing for whoever he chooses, the apostle, to come in and, and, and minister, hallelujah, so that the people, the Gentiles, can receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Thank you. I thank God for the share of minister pots because the heart must be prepared. John 6.44, I want you all to have this scripture. John 6, 44, Jesus spoke and he said, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. So there is a preparing of the soul. God is drawing them. God must draw them with loving kindness. Amen. He says, do I draw thee? So there's something that God does, and he will prepare us to preach the gospel to those that he drew. Amen. Sometimes everyone don't respond. Amen. But those that he drew will respond. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Did we get that? That's Amen. John 6:44. that you are know in your evangelical efforts. Amen. No man is coming. Amen. To him, but those that he drew. Out of four, one may come. Why? Because the parable of the sower, where the word falls on good ground, it was four of them, four, four different circumstances in which one was good ground. Amen? Amen. So you can do that ratio, one out of four. Amen? One out of four, nine times out of ten will be saved. Amen? And heaven rejoices. Heaven rejoices at one soul that giveth his life to Christ. Heaven rejoices. Amen. So even if one comes, your essence is not lost. If none come, the word of God is a hammer at the stony heart. You plant it, you ward it, the increase may come someplace else. Amen. We are planters and waterers of the gospel. If you don't see an increase, don't be dismayed. Amen. Amen. Just keep on preaching. Minister Deborah Harrell, are you sharing? Amen. Um, I got so much from this Bible study tonight. I'm just going to pick out a few things. Um, One that was pretty profound is that we have to develop that prayer life. Um, And it is a conversation when you think of it. It is a conversation when you do have a conversation, when you ask somebody a question like, can you hear me? You You are waiting for a response. And so Amen. I like that iteration, reiteration of that fact that it is a two way street. So and we need to wait on that response and be expecting it from from God. He is our God. So of course he's going to answer us, but we have to learn and be taught that as a, as a, like you said, um as we mature we know and that comes from tarrying. Because most of us just say we got to stay, and then, you know, we get up and we think we did something. But we need to wait on that response. Amen. Amen. That back uh, from God. And also I, I got Cornelius was not a Jew. He was um, a Italian, like you said. So he is considered um, anything back in those days was if you're not a Jew, then you was considered, like, unclean. And so. That's right. You know, or the Greeks. And so um, this speaks to me that Jesus is saying our salvation is for everyone. This That's salvation right. is, and, and another thing where it says Jesus is no respecter of persons. So, again, that speaks to his willingness. No, because there are certain blessings for the Jews, okay, but this salvation is for everyone. And we Amen. are not to be a respecter of person, but we are to submit ourselves as servants, which means the humility that comes from serving someone. Like um, like you said, there is um, the apostle Paul. Now, he walked with Jesus, 
And he told him, he told Cornelius, stand up. I am just a man like you. And so we ought to be, have that humility for one another as well, not because we have a title, but for the love of our brother and sister, that, you know, we can, you know, help them in any form and not be like, um, you make an appointment to speak to me, but to be, have that humility because Jesus is our father and we are not above our master. So we need to humble Amen. ourselves. We need to humble ourselves in all aspects. And I just got that Jesus was saying that, you know, what he called clean, you cannot override him and say, oh, no, it's not unclean, going by traditions and stuff. Jesus Christ is right. king and Lord of lords, and that is it. Once he say it, it is Lord. That is it. We, are, we, we do not know more than he do. A lot of times we do do that. God, what are you talking about? You said that's dirty. I'm not eating that. We try to override God. But God is, he knows everything. He's omniscient, okay? And so we just need to show that humility in reverencing him. God, you know that's what's right. best for me. Because sometimes we don't like when God say no, but God already knows the reason why he says no. We don't know why, but he knows because he can see our beginning and our end. Yeah. And so we just got to have more reverence for him, you know, and it comes with the maturity sitting down and, and learning that, that, that tarrying because I really didn't tarry. I would sit down and pray and think I was doing something. But as you go along, God is going to teach you, this is why you need to tarry. This is why you need to, you know, sit there until you get a response. We got to learn how to wait on the Lord because if he gives us Amen. Something, if we give us stuff before we are ready for it, we just going to mess it up. And we need the guidance of that. Holy Spirit, we need it. We need it. There is no Amen. getting around it. We need it. And, the, and, and we say God and we say um, Jesus and we say the Holy Spirit, but they are one. It's not, it's not three gods. It's one God. That's right. And they all operate together. They don't operate separately. They all operate together. Okay, they don't they don't override one or the other. They all are one. And 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 in in maturing and reading the word and studying to show ourselves approved unto God, that is the only way. Okay, that is the only way we're gonna be able to rightly divide the word of truth. But it was just so much, so much in this um, lesson that you know even the language I am. P-H-A-P with the word. <laughs> you know, so this, yeah, I'm, I'm full. I didn't have, you know, the appetizer. I didn't have everything, dessert, the main course, and I went back for a second. So it was just so much, but I just want to give someone else a chance to share. But it was very, very filling. And the power of life Amen. is that it's in the tongue. It's, it's in right. the tongue, so we got to speak life. And believe in that power is just not, you know, a lot. We always say things, but do you know it's power behind what you put in the atmosphere? Speak life. Speak life over your finances. It's power in that. Speak life over Amen. your children. It's power in that. Speak hey, life over your household. Cornelius had his household believing, and that's what we need to get. Get our household. Get in here. We all need to <laughs> that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Amen. sometimes we gotta go from language that we grew up in, you know, for to to let everyone to understand, to break it down, and make it simple for everyone. We all need the power of the the Holy Spirit. Okay, all right, I'm I'm blessed. I'm let someone else speak. Amen. Amen. We thank God for that share. Amen. And yes, um, you did get a lot. And it was 43 scriptures, amen. And so last week we didn't do 43 scriptures. This week it, we got a little in-depth, but I believe it was needed because it's hard to jump in the middle of a passage and expect for people to understand 
what Amen. God is saying or what the Holy Spirit was saying. So, um, yeah, you did get a lot, and everything that you shared is so true. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit is one. They're not overriding in one, one another. They're in unity with, with one another. And we need to come in unity with that. Amen. The Holy Amen. Spirit is here to be a witness of the Christ, and he is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we need to learn to be in tune with that. Amen. Mother Robert, you are on tonight. Are you sharing? Amen. I just want to thank God tonight for the word because it was really an inspiration for me. We came from Acts 10, 1, 23, 24 to 43. I thank God because Cornelius, he he was over like a, about 100 men, and he feared God. He also was a praying man. He gave alms to the poor, and he was praying like around 3 o'clock p.m., and an angel appeared to him in a vision. And I also learned that when we go down and pray to God, don't just pray for two minutes and get up. Stay there and get an answer from him. Amen. And I also Amen. learned that when we pray, when we come to the church, we come in to pray to God before God, not just before anybody we comes to the preacher, we come in before God also. And I learned that Amen. God had an angel, told the angel to go get Peter because Peter was able to give the word to the people, and that's what the people said right. at that particular time. And I also learned that we need the Holy Ghost, but I also learned that you also can... Okay, first you get saved, then you get baptized, and then you get the Holy Ghost. But tonight I also learned that you can get the Holy Ghost sometime before you even get baptized. And That's I right. And I learned also that, like some people tarry, but when I got the Holy Ghost, I didn't tarry. God gave it to me instantly. I went home, God said, clean house. Everything that wasn't clean, I threw it out. At that That's time, right. I was so young, so I figured... I didn't understand exactly what he was saying, but I know now, but I still clean house. But now I know you had to throw out your TV and all the other stuff. He wanted you to get rid of all the common stuff. And I learned That's that right. back then they, was, um, they didn't believe in eating all this common stuff. But God say what he blessed and he tell you to eat, it's all, it's all right to eat. And I learned that Cornelius, he wasn't a Jew, but he was well known by the Jews, and I learned that he truly, truly loved God. And like the sister said, it was just so much. God is not a respecter person. And Amen. Oh, when you pray, there's a time. Prayer is a time to open yourself up to God. That's right. Hey, Shaba. And I also learned that we need that whole hot dia lo sandi and the low hot. Thank you, God. Hey, Shaba. Glory to God. Jesus. 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 Amen. Jesus. Amen. I thank God for the share of Mother Robert. You know, she's not just the mother of the church. She's my mother. Amen. Amen. And so I bore witness to, amen, I bore witness to in her young years when she gave her life to Christ. Back then, God did an instant work. She was right. She got filled right away, and everything that wasn't right was out the door. Fur coats, TVs, everything. They thought they had to give up. Listen, then she was giving up, giving it all up. It couldn't stay. She didn't want to hear it. And if you wasn't going to serve God, you wasn't going to be in her house because they were taught to put the devil out. So now we have a better understanding. You keep your kids and you cast the devil out. But if you don't want to serve God, you wasn't staying. They was not playing. Amen. And so there was a true honor for spiritual things back then. Mother Roberts, I thank you for your share. 
tonight because it was a lot in the scriptures, and I love the portion that when you pray that you open up yourself to God. You listen, it's time to be naked and unashamed before him. You can be that again. No more hiding. Amen. You ain't got to hide. Amen. It's time to be naked and unashamed. Amen. 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 Minister Jacqueline Harris, your honor, you sharing tonight? I just thank God for the word. I just thank God for the word tonight. And I just enjoyed, I came on late, but I enjoyed what I heard. And you can always learn more by listening. Amen. So I just praise God for the word tonight. Amen. 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 I thank God for um, Minister Jacqueline Harris being on tonight. And as y'all was sharing, like she said, you learn more from from listening because you're actually sharing some of what was taught, even though she got on a little late. Bishop, are you adding anything? Did I get everybody beside Bishop? Because I know, um, Sister Brenda, are you still on? Elder Barnes, are you still on? Okay, Bishop, do you want to add anything, give us anything that's going to take us home concerning the lesson? Um, no, uh-uh, no, thank you. Amen, amen. Bishop, um, well, you know, that's, that's at the leading of the Holy Spirit, too. You got to know when to speak and when not to speak, amen. amen. And sometimes, amen. hallelujah. Sometimes the Holy Spirit has said it all. Amen. 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 That's Mother Robin. She loves loves Bishop, huh? Amen. Amen. I thank God that I have a mother that loves my husband. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. So, beloved, without further ado, that's the end of this Bible study. We would like for you to continue to excavate the scriptures, read them, study them, study them, get all that you can out of them. May the Holy Spirit reveal to you. If you have any questions, you can email us, Cornerstone Deliverance Church at gmail.com. Amen. Scripture text so that we know what you're talking about as well. Hallelujah. Because it's very important that you do get an understanding. Amen. It's very important that you get an understanding. I'm going to ask that um, Minister Howell close us out in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. As we know how, just to say thank you for this lesson. Thank you for the apostle and the bishop for their time that they put into it, Father God. Thank you for our spiritual leaders. Thank you for the word. The word that taught mm. us that salvation is for all, Father God. Thank you for yes, God. binding up the hands of the enemy where we wasn't distracted, where we was able to hear what thus saith the Lord. We thank yes, you for God. taking this intimate time to speak to us, Father God. We thank you for taking this time to deliver us out of whatever we might be going through. This is more spiritual mm. warfare, Father God, that you have given us mm. to do against the enemy, Father God. We thank you for how you Shabba, equipped Shabba, us, Shabba. how you took the time to nurture us and continue us to show us love, Father God. Now as we mm. depart and go our separate ways, go with each and every one of us, make the crooked path straight, Father God, and bless us to continue excavate and stay in your word, Father God. More of your grace, more of your grace for this way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, you are blessed. Go in peace and serve the Lord and be a witness of the Christ. Amen.